welcome our board chair and shout out to several of our commissioners. My bosses are in the room, so please, please clap real loud. Uh, our number one boss, Andrea Purnell, board chair of the Regional Arts Commission. Please welcome Kim Whitley and Sherry Shepard to the stage. that Kim's show, Act Your Age, beat in the history of Bounce TV, was the highest rated show yeah. in the history of Bounce TV, with 2.14 million viewers watching a back-to-back, I know you had that in your nose, I always like to like give my girl flowers, watching back-to-back -back episodes, and never in the history of Bounce TV, has any show done that well? And it, I, it's so excited because, you know, to see that women in their 50s, people want yeah. to watch what yeah. we are yeah. bringing. Yeah. Yeah. I am so excited. And I'm excited because this is another level for Kim because she is the star. Mm. Even though it's three co leads, she's the star of the show. And I'm just, I'm so I'm ecstatic. You and so, you know, I'm so, and I couldn't get it this weekend because I ain't got that damn antenna. I got to go to, I told him, I was like, I can't find bounce on my TV. So I sent my assistant to, to Best Buy to get the antenna. But I found out that it's also airing again on the sugar, the sugar, brown sugar network. I don't even know what that is. Com. Who got a oh, network called Brown Sugar? But, I don't know where okay. it is. But, but they, you can't get no. We're sorry. No. no don't you don't jump in. We do this on our podcast. That's Because so, you had that it in your notes. But so, I saw it on the plane and I was here. just like. Oh, that's right. You saw the I announcement just, variety announcement. And I, I will also you all say, so much. I will never, never stop a woman giving another woman that's right. a flower. I got it. I got it on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. You, you ain't posted also, nothing. I, you got I, nothing on it. I Tisha know. posted I, it. I mean, we got to post it. Shabai, She's posted Because she said we don't have anything. Everybody else is posted about how well we did. Yes. So, it, it's a lot. Thank you, but you were instrumental. And your show got picked up for two more seasons. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. 
She's like, I got to get the man notes. I'm sorry. And she won an NAACP Image Award for the best talk show, outstanding talk show. And you're like, I got that in my notes. Okay, okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Andre. Welcome to the show. Sorry. And folks in the audience saying, the shows are so good. It's so good. It's so good. We will have time for Q&A. And we look forward to hearing from you and the questions that you have for these lovely, lovely ladies. Thank you. We're so glad to be with you tonight. We're excited to be here. Let's learn more about you both. Okay. When did you know you wanted to pursue a career in the arts? Come on. You've been talking since you came out the womb. (laughs) (laughs) I think for me, it wasn't so much that I knew I was going to be in the arts. It was just kind of like, I love performing. Mm -hmm. We come from Chicago, and my family used to have, every Sunday we have like a family night variety show. Mm -hmm. And I used to do a dance called the California Shake. And it was the California Shake. I can't shake it no more like I used to. (laughs) but, But we used to do that, and I always liked to make, people laugh. On my report card, it was Sherry's very smart, but she talks a little too much. <laughs> and I remember getting all, you know, my parents would be like, oh, so you like talking? Oh, you like to be the class clown? Thankfully, it's paid off. But I just all turned into. <laughs> two. I know, mm-hmm. I said it to my dad all the time. Um, but it, it just always seemed like I love performing. Mm-hmm. I always thought it would be a, a being on the radio. But, oh, interesting. Yeah, That's and really but we did do the radio. But um, oh, that's right. And it just seemed like my life kind of <laughs> Just kind of went that way, mm-hmm. you know, being a legal secretary and going to a comedy club and starting stand up. So it's just like when things are divinely ordered, mm-hmm. when I look back, Say it yeah. always oh. was something where I performed and made people feel good. Yeah. And then it was only like maybe, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago, I went, oh, this is what I want. This is my mm. purpose. Yeah. Making yeah, yeah, yeah. people laugh and feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. you. I was going to say, it's pretty much the same thing. I think mm-hmm. when God puts something in you, uh, we have several talents, but that there's that talent that you go to all the time. You think right. about it. If there's something that you love to do and, and you would do it for free, yes. think about that. That's the thing you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. You're like, Absolutely. I can do this. I can paint all night long. You know, mm-hmm. that's the thing I want to do. But that's how you find It's something in you that you have you. to. Like when we yeah, met each other, mm-hmm. it was at a comedy club. Kim huh. walked in. Well, I would always see her on commercials. Mm-hmm. She was always that girl with the pretty dimples mm-hmm. and with a big smile. And she was known as the girl that did commercials. And she walked into the comedy club. And she, like when Kim walks in, as you know, even when she got on stage complaining, you know she's there. <laughs> <laughs> and she walked in the comedy club and I was a shy girl. And I was like, wow, I want to be her friend. And she just drew people to her. Like, you know. And you were so plain and. I was not plain. I don't think I was plain. I mean, yeah, I was plain. I was plain. I had my hair in two little French braids yes. with, with the bows on the end and like Look the Bobby style. <laughs> exactly. You were like, Annie M, Annie M. I was like, oh, I know. Oh, <laughs> but we were at a comedy club and it was like, and we did that for free and we were there right. all the time. Till late at night, and, mm-hmm. you know, doing that's, yeah, that's for free. the same thing for both of us. As an early age, you, knew, you don't know what you're going to do, hmm. but you know you have that in you. Yes. Yeah. So if you have yeah, children yeah. and you see that, you know, kind of nurture, nurture it. That. Yeah, nurture it. Really nurture it. And give your children all the experiences. Because my parents would take me everywhere. I didn't know what I wanted to do. But if I didn't see it, they took me to go skiing. You know, I couldn't stop on the ski, so I knew I didn't want to be a skier. <laughs> <laughs> but they gave me that experience. So right. I think we expose our children. Yeah. They don't know what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Kim, is it correct that your paternal grandmother was an actress? Oh, wow. They've been digging deep. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even know that. What? Yes. You know, I come from, uh, I do. They're all... Uh, theater, you know, my aunt Gloria and Uncle John, opera singers, my grandmother, actress. They and I didn't realize this because now my nieces, your nieces on yes. play because she's in a big major. Right, one's play. on Broadway and the other yep. one is doing movies. And yes, I would say. Yes, I, it was the gene. <laughs> now I feel bad for teasing her. Because I, I always tease Kim and, uh, because her father is an identical twin with her uncle. And, they, and, and her aunt, they're architects. Her brothers are architects. They have an architectural firm in uh, Cleveland. They've yeah, built most of the big yeah. stuff. Yeah, huh? Yeah, we all go. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but, but you know what trips me out about? And I would always tease Kim and go, 
every, and all her people in her family are professionals. And I would go, how the heck did you freaking become a comic and an actress? I know. But you never told me that you're, fa- you don't be telling people stuff. Hey, this girl invents every, every invention. Kim is so smart. She has inventions out the wazoo. And she never, t- this girl is secretly a billionaire and never tells anybody. <laughs> You that. forgot? <laughs> what you forget? Hey, because I was like, okay, okay. We, because we definitely you know, will do I love research. that you did your research because I do forget about that. My cousin, how I even got interested in acting, because my cousin is what well, he was, uh, God rest his soul, Ron O'Neill from Superfly. Oh, that's right. I know about Ron O'Neill. Oh, Superfly. Oh, you know about oh, Ronnie. Oh, right. So I used to look at him. He had that long hair, and he was right. in Super Bowl, but he was great in Othello. Like, he was a serious actor. Yeah. And I used to watch him and say, one day, I'm going to be able to do I'm going to do that. I'm going to have wow. the same hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably in your drawer somewhere. It's definitely in my drawer. And it's so funny because her nieces. One is an actress on mm-hmm. TV shows, and her other niece is on Broadway. Mm-hmm. And they always say that they looked at their auntie Kim yeah, and no, said, "One day so I'm gonna do that." Look yeah. at the show we say. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, me too, I and you never know who's watching you. You yeah. never right? know. You never know. That's who why you I, I didn't go to the polls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the voting polls. I'm at the- <laughs> About two funny mamas. Tell us about the origin story of two funny mamas and what do you love most about this two time, get it right, two time award winning podcast? 52,000 subscribers. No, we're at 60 now. Oh, we're over 60. 60. Yeah. Pushing 70 now. Almost 70. 300 videos. We would like all of you to uh, go on YouTube, go and, two and, and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Yes, yes. How did that come to be? Oh man, you I know. Tell you, but I thought of something too sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I want to no, tell no, the truth before Kim started lying. Um, <laughs> I wanted, I have wanted to do something with Kim Whitley for a long time. I really wanted to do a talk show with Kim Whitley, and we can never. She, she, Kim is so chaotic. It just never happened. Yeah, yeah. She's so chaotic. I like literally like Kim will pay for the pilot. We'll shoot. The talk show, we'll go shopping around. She was always too busy, always too busy. So I was like, what can I do with Kim? Because we just always had a chemistry. We were working together on the Tom Joyner Morning Show. Oh um, you know, we, what were our names? T.T. and Tata. T.T. and Tata. T.T. and Tata. <laughs> uh, Tom named us that. And, and I just always wanted to work with her. And I said, it, podcasts were just like happening. And I said, Kim, let's do this podcast together because we're so funny. We used to make so many videos uh, on the show, on the radio show, and put them on Instagram and we would get so many but comments. Be this was during the time nobody knew what a podcast was. No, it was a lot of podcasts. Nah. No, you didn't know what a podcast was. <laughs> True. Facts. It was a lot of podcasts. And I kept asking Kim, and Kim is like, she'll go, yeah, 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 but she don't really mean it. And so I would go to my, my managers because I said, this could be big. Like, and, and so Kim kept putting me off, literally for three years. And it was longer and the, No, it was longer. Longer. The it was last three. interview, it was two. Now it's three. Go ahead. It's three. It was three. That's why I wanted to tell the truth, but she started lying. So I would go. I went to my agents and managers, and they loved the idea, and they couldn't get it together with Kim, and, and it just never. Worked. And they said, "Well, why don't you do it with somebody else?" So they started all of the female comics actresses that you know. They threw at me, and I said, no, mm-hmm. it has got to be Kim. Mm-hmm. And then friends started saying, Kim not going to do this. It, I don't think she likes you. And I was like, you think she don't like me? <laughs> but I said, I got to hold, I'm not going to do it. If it's not with Kim Whitley, I just don't think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And one day she said, yeah, and I, and I told her, I said, Kim, I will pay for it. Like, I guarantee we're going to make money. I'll pay for it. It's I was no like, cool. <laughs> Let's do this. What took you so long? It was, I told her, I said, no risk to you. We actually went, we drove, to, we were going to do the podcast at Kevin oh, Hart. Right. He's got a whole podcast studio. And we were going to tape it there. You know, I was going to, I did all, I stayed up all night doing the research, getting our LLC trademark. I did all that. You're going to use this recording in court. Yeah, I am. Because every because I'm a fifty one percent owner, she every year she comes and she wants to fight the fifty one percent ownership. But I do all of the work, all of the business, everything. And so I said, Kim, you don't have to do anything. I got a, I the graphics. 
We no, did. We the, didn't do nothing. You Chris, didn't do Chris, Media. They no, didn't, they, yo, you found the people. I you found everybody. Song. You didn't do nothing. First of all, it was during the pandemic. You didn't have nothing else to do. <laughs> Let's really get honest. I was single and I was lonely. <laughs> And Sherry got to have something to do. So I let her put the little podcast The little together. podcast. I was like, go, Sherry, go. And, the, and she said we were going to do it. And then the pandemic happened. And we right. went into court. So we weren't able to go to Kevin Hart's thing. But in the middle of that, it was so funny. I Because I had I trademarked everything, I got the patent, everything for Two Funny Mamas. I got the incorporation papers together, your LLC, everything. So in the middle of that, I think I had taken out on Twitter, Two Funny Mamas, at Two Funny Mamas. And Chris from Midcoast Media, I had done some comedy here. Was it Levity Live, I think, or Helium? At Helium, uh, uh, some years back, and met Chris when he interviewed me on his podcast. So he just happened. But I don't believe in just happenstance. Mm-hmm. I believe in God orders steps. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say he happened. He just happened to call to say, hey, I saw you had the thing. What's going on with it? And when I told him what I was trying to do, which is why sometimes you have to just put it out there. Mm-hmm. And then God sends people to assist you. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, I, this is what I do. And I was like, what? And he said, I, I can help you guys. So then I went to Kim and reluctantly she got on board with me and the whole time her foot was in the camera. She was rocking back and forth, <laughs> eating on the podcast. We did it on Mother's Day, remember? That was our first podcast. That was our first and I was so and I was like, I should have went with Lonnie Love. This girl <laughs> This don't make no damn. I could have went with Cheryl Underwood. I could have went with Nancy Nash. Every time she and she was like, Look, look at my toe, look at my toe. And I was like, why was I waiting? But it turned out to be the best thing ever. Ever. Oh now you go online and tell your side of the story. That was good. That was really good. I forgot about the paper. And then I and then look, and then I, I sent her all the papers. Contracts and I said, Kim, I'm doing, I'm taking 51 percent because I'm doing most of the work. She's like, Yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. So I sent the papers. I'm like, Kim, look at the papers. If there's any question about anything, I'm happy to explain everything to you. I'm gonna take care of the money, the advertising. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now every time she's like, I ain't know you were doing this. I ain't know I wasn't getting this. Why I'm not? And I go, I sent the contracts. And she, and this is what she said. She go, You know, I don't read that stuff. <laughs> And now Chris know. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. This is what she said. I got people to read. So I like to put this on um, film every chance I get because I know she's going to sue me. It's just going to be an unsung. <laughs> <laughs> they always ring. The group, we're like the group. The group. We're up. <laughs> One more image award and we're going to have One problems more, with him. Wrong. I just know. <laughs> chat a bit more about motherhood. Uh, Let's talk about what influenced your decision to become a mother. Ooh. <laughs> really? That's what you I didn't mean saying? to take it low now. I didn't mean to take it low. That was one night stand that just turned into <laughs> Jeff. No, don't listen to her. Don't listen to her. It was not. <laughs> oh my God. You, that, okay, that's a great question. Your message. story's more interesting Okay, but even interesting. You were married. Did you decide to have a child, or was that like a oops? Or y'all just, I don't know what y'all do when you're married. I ain't never been married. And y'all sit out and say, ooh, that's. But you've been engaged baby. five times. You're going to just say Everybody that wants to marry Kim. <laughs> when I tell you, many engaged people? Marie, she, has, she just has no follow through. We're talking that's about, the we're talking about Kim. children. So uh, I decided. They always want to marry Kim. See what happens? This is when Kim starts. She gets. Like she, they, they, they get engaged to Kim. <laughs> this, Kim is beautiful. We're talking about and these children. men, yeah, I know. Because you, they, they come and they get with Kim and they're like these big, strong, hulking, like fine, gorgeous dudes. And they come up to Kim and they get with Kim and then they, they get a ring on her finger. And then you see him like three months later and they're like, Have you seen Kim? <laughs> I don't know where she, I ain't seen my woman. She, Sherry, she coming back. That's her <laughs> oh, that so, if we could buy that in a six ounce yes. bottle at Sephora, <laughs> well, I would be rich. You would be rich. Oh my gosh. No, but that's well, tell your story know, about but, Joshua. It's much more but interesting. But I do. I, I am interested in that. Were, were that's you, what I'm you asking you. Tell your story about Joshua. Okay. Did you plan yours? 
much more. Mine you was a plan and neither was yours. But I, you were married. No, mine was intentional. I was That's married. That's what I said. So yours is much more. Just don't tell I just me. never asked you that. First of all, stop bossing me around in front of a stranger. <laughs> you told you about that. Okay, so. Oh my God. <laughs> I would say that mine was, um, I said, if you, if you ever watched the show Race and Whitley. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, How many of you have? Many. Joshua, of course, mentoring a, a woman, and she had a baby. She left him at the hospital, and she left my name and number. And like you say, God orders your steps. Yes. And you, you put it out in the, in the universe. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I want you know, I want a yeah. kid. I want to be a mother. But obviously, like my mama said, you ain't got no man. I don't know how that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, so God uh, went around my mama and uh, <laughs> decided to deliver. Uh, and I had uh, probably about two hours to decide. make a decide if I wanted to, in my, you know, thank God my mom and dad were visiting. And my mother, she, I went outside and we sat on the bench. And I was like, Mommy, I, I, can't, I can't take this kid. It's not like a puppy. I can't just take a kid. It's a human being. <laughs> and, and my mother they had real talk with me, and I began, and she she said, "Honey, she said, you do, you don't you don't have any children. <laughs> you don't have a man. <laughs> You're about ninety nine years old. <laughs> if not now, when? I never forget. And she, she put that reality in my face. I was like, wow, mom. And I remember the social work on the phone, and I, I remember literally saying. Okay, just bring the baby, bring the baby. And I hung up in case I changed my mind, but it really, my body went cold. Mm. I never could, I had like those chill bumps and I went cold. It was so frightening <clears throat> because they literally dropped off this four day old okay. baby yeah. with a giant plastic bag, trash bag, see through, <laughs> with some diapers in it, some little milk bottles, yeah. and some ointment for his belly button. Yeah. And then they had a piece of paper. And they said, well, she said, I said, who is she? First of all, they just kept saying, she said, give the baby two ounces, and then you burped the baby, and he, uh, some diapers, and put this ointment on. See ya. <laughs> I couldn't, I was like, did, 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 they, did they know what, did, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> and my mom was there, and yes. I remember even the baby, I could, my hand was big as the baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I can't change it. I don't know what that is in the diaper. I don't know what it is. You know, so, I, so my mother took Joshua. And this is the, the really the one thing that was the craziest story when you know it's ordained. I remember I was like, how do you name a child within, because the hospital said we need a name to put on the birth certificate. How do you name a child with something that they have to live with for the rest of their life? You know, I'm looking around my kitchen. I was like, ooh, pepper towel. <laughs> So, oh my gosh, so cute. Kitchen aid, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, oh. So, I, I literally, I ran and got the Bible. I did. I ran and got the Bible because I was like, "What do you do when you can't? You, I have nowhere else to go." What do you do? Come on, yeah. When you can't find the name. I don't know where you're going, but I jumped in. That's that dual team. So I opened the Bible and I never forget it. And I just said, God, what do I name this child? And I'll, I'll never get this. I heard a whisper in this wow. ear, and I heard, Josh. <laughs> and let me tell you, I never liked the name Josh. <laughs> I said, oh, God, you got jokes. <laughs> because they always call him Josh. Right. And it wasn't, I was like, Josh, what's that going to do? But this is why I knew the name meant something. I was at the Delta Convention in D.C. Oh, some years ago. Oh, 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 oh. It was 30,000 people. I walked out on stage with Tommy from uh, Steve Harvey. Yeah, yeah. Nephew Tommy. And I, nephew Tommy. I walked out on stage. I heard 30,000 people say, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. And then I understood that this boy is meant for something. And then my friend says, and I called her. Go ahead. I called her. I still haven't done it. Go ahead. Go on and say, go on and make it a baby. I said, what's your name in the baby? She said, Joshua. I said, Kim. She says, from the Bible. I know it's from the Bible. I said, oh my God, Joshua. Do you know what Joshua has done? Like, and I said, and she said, uh, no, I, I ain't read. <laughs> I said, Kim, you ain't opened up the Bible and read what Joshua did for the land. And he done walked around buildings, 
seven times and he conquered kingdoms. And she's like, no, I ain't read no, I ain't read that. <laughs> Have you read that? Have you read Joshua yet? Have I read the contracts yet? <laughs> No, Thank God you a Delta. There was 30,000 Deltas. <laughs> but you told me the story. I got the little cliff notes. I didn't even but Kim, good. when I tip me, I jumped jump in. Jump in, jump in. This was the most. This I, you got Nothing is by, it is all by design. Yes, yes. This was the most ill-equipped woman to have a child. Kim is so, was so all over the place, and everybody was like, this girl then adopted a baby. What, this, should we do an intervention and take the baby? Oh, yeah, that's true. They so we, but, you know, this is the wonderful thing about Kim. She has a village. Mm -hmm. Kim has a which you saw from Raising Whitley. Mm -hmm. Kim has such a village. If you go to her house right now, there's about 30 people in her house <laughs> with Joshua. Because, and so everybody is jumped in to be with Joshua, and nobody calls him Josh. By the way, no, everybody, we call him Joshua. Joshua. And um, he's the smartest little one. Joshua will look at you. He kind of closes his eyes. And he, he just, he, he's got a lot of discernment. He knows, mm -hmm. he knows your weak spots. He knows yes. the trigger points. Because he kicked Jeffrey. And he looked at me dead in my eye. He said, I didn't kick Jeffrey. He sure did. He sure did. <laughs> Jeffrey looking at me like, you gonna believe him? He kicked me. <laughs> but... Um, it was so funny because we all it was at a com it was at a comedy club that Kim and Buddy Lewis were hosting and everybody brought diapers and formula. Oh, Kim right. didn't know Kim didn't know Desitin from the Gosh. the formula. <laughs> and That's but true. she yes. I just remember everybody kept saying to her, If God gave you this baby, he gonna give you everything you need mm -hmm. to right. take yeah. care of this baby. Which and Kim true. was worried about, but what if I don't work? I remember that remember was a big that, that was a big thing. She was like, "What if I don't work and I can't take care of the baby?" And I said to Kim, "If you have an apartment, God gives you apartment blessings. Right. When you move into your house, he gives you house blessings. Right. If you have a baby, he's going to give you blessings to take care of that baby because that's your first decision." And what happened? And oh my gosh, she booked she I don't remember what you booked, but no, you it was, you never stopped working. It, what was the biggest blessing is because I'll never forget when you had that conversation with Diva. Oprah Winfrey stepped in. Oh, oh Oprah Winfrey oh. stepped in for raising so Whitley. Saw, heard the story, and heard I had a village and all of that, and she said, oh, "I'd like to right. do a show about that." And it sustained me. It has yes. taken me on. To but you've worked things. more, more That's with the truth. Joshua mm. than you worked when you Absolutely were single, a single wow. mother. Wow. Absolutely, the truth. she's never stopped working, and now she's got the highest rated sitcom on Bounce TV. Okay, go ahead. Ask me no question. We have got two questions, Look, and the show is over. And by the way, <laughs> and she has an audible called Kim K Y M. And it was rated right. one of the top ten podcasts to listen to by Variety for by Deadline or one of the big huge publications magazines of 2022. One of the top ten. I have been blessed. You're right. And, oh my God. You're you told you. me that. Wow. I was so afraid. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Listen. What's the next that's, question? That's, that's what this all is night. about. That's what this is I told about. you it was it was interesting. And and let me note the the ribbon that's running through these conversations. Um, and and that is a spiritual one. Oh, you ladies yeah. are clearly yeah. believers. But I like Kim's t-shirt. She said, I may cuss, but what'd you say? What's oh, no, that t-shirt? I, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta let the people know. We just <laughs> And he, knows heart. Heart. <laughs> he knows our heart. Yes, he does. Yes, we're, very, he does. we're very real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're very, very real. We, we're very spiritual. I mean, that's our core, our center. We know why we're here. We know, you know, when we go through it, and we do go through it, who we have to go to mm -hmm. to get us through it. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. that's something we've always been, but we're just really real. So, you go, you know, you're going to hear in our podcast, we talk a lot about sex. Go, hell, we too Why you go say that just saying? That, that, that didn't ask nothing. I know, but I was talking about our relationship. Like, we're not real religious, but we got a great relationship. You have a foundation. We got yes. a foundation. Oh, we curse yeah. a lot. Like, we curse a lot. I'm sorry. I'm glad but, I didn't. You know, you know what you know, What's your next question? Okay. It ain't a lot. I'm saying, we're no, married. It's not a lot. <laughs> yes, we do. Chris, do we curse on the Chris podcast? Chris curse. Who are you asking him for? <laughs> Everybody. Do we curse a lot on the podcast? What did you say? I said we don't. No, not much at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, tell us a bit more about. I lo I'm loving this 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 womanhood here, and and I'd love to hear about some other women that may have supported 
or inspired you in a personal or professional way throughout your journey? Well. Wendy Williams. Oh. Oh. No, I can't go in the second row. That's all right. That's all right. Because it's the shit. That was, the, that was the name. <laughs> Who inspired you? You have a lot. You have a lot of women in your life. That's I, right. I, you got I, a lot I, of good I, friends. You know what you don't even realize is it's so funny. Is that I have won um, in this last week two awards. One to BET on Sunday, and one uh, last night. Yes. Through, uh, with Dion Cole. Magazine, Cole, Cedric Dillon. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 But it's Oh, St. Louis, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and Guy Tory. Yeah. 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 They were, and I was the only woman, but what's so interesting is in my speech, they say, you know, I say, uh, we'll be Marshall Warfield. And then I say, Sherry Shepard. And I know people probably think that, oh, that's because, oh, she's her friend. But I, I didn't tell you in one speech, I said, because Sherry Shepard would like me to shamelessly plug our podcast at this point. <laughs> I, I said it, but I call her my manager's manager. I can call Sherry for anything and say, what do you think I should do? Uh, should I do this? Should I take this job? And she always has great advice. So when you say inspire, and then when I call her, and I was like, girl, you're so smart, and then I can do this. She, she always like, no, Kim, you have it in you too. You know, you can, act, you can do this and that. And I remember at a time when I was just doing black uh, uh, sitcom work, and she was doing all the white sitcom work. I was known as a black girl on all the white TV shows. Yes. That's the thing. And I was known as a black girl on all the black girls. <laughs> And I was like, oh, Sherry, I got a show on ABC. Dude. What do I do? I'll never forget. I was walking around and, in that office, and I called you, and I said, what do I do? And you were like, you do you. You do the same thing, Kim. Right. You got this in you. Mm -hmm. And that was way early in the career. Oh, wow. and so when you say people that inspire you, you never know that the woman next to you is your inspiration. Wow. Yeah. That's really nice. Yes. And then the woman next to you inspiration, and I want to say mm -hmm. even a woman I met tonight, Mayor Jones is in the house. Yeah. And we just met her tonight. She's my sore. Yes, she is. Why are you calling out your sores? I may have to call out my sores. Don't do it. Oh, okay. Go two or three. I might be here. Welcome. Welcome. But she inspired me with what five wow. minutes yeah. and just yes. hearing her story, I was like, huh? What? What? Huge and I was like, you're the, you're the man, you're doing it like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and, and a mother uh, has yeah. a 15 year old son. Yeah. Uh, that she can't come to our show tomorrow because she had to go to his game. Oh, if I that wasn't I a mother, I wouldn't have understood that. I'd have been like, oh, you Absolutely. can't go to her show? But I was like, you better go to that game. <laughs> right, right, right. So we, yeah. when we talk about women yeah, next to us. We understand that we, us. because uh, Kim and I always have to make decisions based on being a mother first mm -hmm. and turning down um, things to be a mother. Like Kim, yes. uh, Bounce TV sent Kim on such a big, huge promotional tour for this, and it was really important that she appeared and I remember she was supposed to, somebody was honoring her and she said, I gotta leave tomorrow. This is for Joshua. Hmm. I'm gonna stay home. And it was something really important, you know, and um, it's, 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 hard. It's, it's, it's hard, but it's like sacrifice. at the end of the day. Um, but you see, once again, the woman next to you, because I called you and you were struggling with Jeffrey, you had to do a parent teacher conference. Oh, they asked me yes. to, at the essence of uh, women's Something, luncheon, something, lunch. It's a bit to, to, big deal. To introduce, it's a big they deal. They wanted me to mm. present the award to Cheryl Lee Ralph, wow. and it's a really, it's a big deal. Awesome. And that you did Cheryl Lee had asked me, but it was in California, and I said I have a parent teacher conference, mm. I have to attend, and everybody called me. I mean, I got all the phone calls, mm -hmm. and it, you know, just Sherry, but gotcha. all the brands that you want to be uh, in in front of, and there's all these directors and the big people that's going to be there, and this can help you. And, and you know that one thing mm -hmm. goes, that thing that goes, oh, oh. And I said, no, mm -hmm. I got a parent teacher conference. Right. It's important that wow. I be there to learn about what my son is going through. He's 17. The window is short yes. for yes. my yes. son. Yes. And yes. that was supposed to be this morning. I went to that parent teacher conference. And uh, just sat on that little chair with all the teachers and glazed over with all the stuff they're teaching. But he was so excited mm -hmm. that I had yes. gone. Yeah. And I remember one thing that Miss um, Winfrey had said to me when she was talking on the phone. She said, Sherry, at the end of the day, she said, that's why I chose not to have children. 
because I knew this thing was going to take all of my time. Mm -hmm. And she said at the end of the day, Jeffrey's not going to want to, he's not going to want to hear, I did all this for you. Kids don't want to hear, I did all this for you. They don't care. They're going to want to know, but when were you with me? And so we we struggle. We struggle struggle with that all the time. Every day. Every day of, you know, being away. Um, Mommy guilt. Yeah, mommy guilt. Yeah, because Jeffrey's like, where are you going now? Now. And I said, Auntie Kim making me go, so you got to call Auntie Kim. (laughs) Oh yeah, I throw you under the bus all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely. So we true. understand. Yeah, yeah. You got to be with you. Yeah. Absolutely. We admire it. That's fact. number one. That's it. number one. A few more questions, and I'm going to turn it over to the audience. I feel like you have 40 questions. I do, you <laughs> but you know what? Everything. It, it doesn't even matter what's on the paper because this conversation has been so oh rich, so so rich. And your sons are so lucky to have you as yeah. He Jeffrey don't think so. He like, but Jeffrey <laughs> said to me the other day, he was like, "Why can't you be like regular moms and wear and work a regular job and wear your own hair?" Baby. <laughs> 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 and then I took the hair off. He was like, "No, put it back on, mom. Put it back on." <laughs> How does it work with their friends? Because I'm sure that their friends. Mark that, please. Uh, oh, to oh, put it Mark that, that, stand up. That, Everything please is a joke. We think about up. putting it on stage. What she just said. So we. I'm sorry. We go on tours. So be flat. Can you mark that? What she just said. <laughs> oh, thank you. So she can put it in her stand up. It's very funny. It's a whole okay. premise. Yeah. There. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to know how this works. Your, your, both of your sons are at an age in which they have friends that are on the internet and watching television and have oh. seen mom and yeah. you know. Uh, do they come home and say, "Mommy, mommy." But Joshua's what he's Joshua's ten, right? Twelve. That's, oh, jeez! I got a two Christmas and birthday gifts. Right. I got to no, get. No, you just call him a, 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 the Kindle. Kindle. Okay, he's twelve. Uh, yeah, he's twelve. I know it's hard to believe that he's twelve. Absolutely. Um, what was the question? How do they react with their friends and seeing you on the internet? And no, the, oh, that, that actually wasn't even the question. Oh, that wasn't the question. Oh, I'll be that, filtering stuff through that, my crazy. That, no, that's what I said, but that ain't what I want to say. What I want to really ask is, tell me about a, a pet peeve. As a, as a parent, what are some of your biggest oh, pet peeves? Gosh. Oh my gosh! Where, the stinky Where do you room. start? Where do you, his oh, room. Oh, Why would boys do oh, it smell man. like ass, tomatoes, and onions? And, and corn chips. And corn chips. Like everything. You walk, even if you open up the windows, you walk in and you go, "Who is dead in this room?" Girls yeah, don't smell it, like that. Girls don't smell like that, boys. <laughs> They just stay, <laughs> they stay stinking. And then, I don't know, whoever invented acts, I want to burn up the whole corporation. <laughs> that acts is that cologne, because yes, yes, they will put it on, on top of mustard. Yes. Jeffrey, well, I go, it, it is just not, lo- you can't get this from me. The smell that is emanating. And then boys like to get nasty. They like to fart and leave a room. And they think it's funny. Oh, yeah. They do oh, all my kind of stuff. gosh. Like, so, what about the, I don't know why Joshua will not flush the toilet. Oh. Oh. What is that? I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you proud of what you left? I don't understand. <laughs> Thing. I don't know what age it kind of clicks over. When they start liking girls. Uh-huh. When they start liking Paying girls. Paying a bit more attention. Oh, it's, it's true. There's so many things wow. to do. I know pet peeves can run. It's so funny because you, um, the one question that you did ask about how does the boys feel, Joshua's not here yet. But with Jeffrey, because he's 17 years old, he's going through, he's in his awkward stage of pimples, he likes girls, just got a girlfriend. He said to me, because uh, he had done something in Starbucks, and I looked at him and I said, ooh, this is going to be a good story on the talk show about Jeffrey. Everybody loves hearing about Jeffrey. And we got in the car, the Uber, and he turned to me and he said, Mom, I'm not a story. I don't want you to talk about me anymore. I don't want you to show my picture. And the whole everything he said, I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. And I said, Jeffrey, like, my life has been built on talking about you for 17 Years when I post stuff, he said, "Don't post anything more about me." Mm. I said, "When I post stuff, we're like Lucy and Ricky." And he said, "I'm not a story 
because one of his teachers said, your mom makes everything a story, and he didn't like it. He said, I don't want you to talk about. I need you to go back mom. and talk to that teacher. I know. <laughs> but when I talked to her, I talked to Wanda Sykes, her kids are teenagers. I talked to Garcelle Bouvet, Bouvet her kids are teenagers. Mm -hmm. They go through mm -hmm. the stage they don't want, because they don't want everybody knowing. Because people go up to Jeffrey, and they say, Jeffrey, you got a girlfriend? And I don't, oh, I don't realize, for me, it's yeah. a joke. Yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that people, because I flash this picture all the time, that people come and they just say, I'm used to it. Right. And then uh, uh, my family said, well, Sherry, you asked for this. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey did it's not. Like and I said, well, then why God give them to me? That's material. <laughs> 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 and I tell you, it, it really, I went in my room and I cried. Yeah. I still get emotional because I love sharing about this boy right. of mine. Right. But I have to respect mm -hmm. his decision on not, you know, no, please don't clap because I'm so clap. upset. No, you can clap. <laughs> I have but, to now respect. But I will say that's a full, that's a, that's a teachable moment, right? Like, I'm still trying to go to therapy. I'm still doing what I'm going to do, but you said, no, I respect you. Yeah, but see, what you don't understand I is you. I don't have a life. Like, I don't, I don't talk like, about no, I don't talk about No, like, this is what I think God did, and this is the truth. You're so used to talking about Jeffrey. Yeah. It's easy. Yes. You're at a new level, mm. and now he has to give you a new challenge. I said that to you yesterday. No, you didn't. No, 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 this is hilarious. Uh, what advice do you give aspiring creatives that may be in the audience tonight, oh. or we may take messages back to them, but especially as the Regional Arts Commission, um, as the chair, I, I must ask that you leave us with a little bit of in inspiration, if you will. Uh, what advice do you have to give? My number one mantra is run towards the thing you fear. Mm. I just said that to you. Did I just say that? Did I just say that? She gonna turn around and like this is her mantra now. You said it to me because I told it to you. Whatever. <laughs> I do. I think that thing. You gotta sit down and go. What's that thing in the pit of my stomach that I put on the on the shelf with the fine china? Mm. What's it? Because there's always that voice that will say you're not good enough. Who do you think you are? You're boring. Nobody wants to hear you. It, it's always that voice. But once you start running towards it, because on the other side of fear are all of the blessings. Mm. But they just, you just got to get through that. Mm. You know, there's that scripture that says, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow right. of death. Come on. The, the valley of the shadow right. of death. Mm -hmm. I shall fear no evil because it's the shadow. Mm. And so on the other side is where everything happens for you if you can just get past the false evidence appearing real. Yeah. And when you get over on that side, and when you start saying, you got to say to yourself, that's why I love Good Morning Gorgeous, Mary J. Blige mm -hmm. kept saying, you have to stand in that mirror and look at yourself and go, I love who is looking back at me. Because you will always have those voices that say you're not enough. And you have to say, I am enough. I am enough. What I bring is enough. Yes. Yes. And on that other side, the world will open up for you. Mm -hmm. You know what kills me? <laughs> You, before you did your hundredth episode <laughs> of your talk show, you didn't have all these quotes and things. You've been you practicing for, no, no. Yeah, well, I've been practicing uh -huh, 18 you've been years. Practicing, but you got this. 18 years. You've been doing no, because you ain't never put it all okay. together like that. You had like little bits and pieces, and now you done did the show for a hundred times. <laughs> and that was really good. Was really it's good. been 18 years, and that's good. another thing. Just because you have a dream, just because it's a no, it may mean not right, right now. now. Because sometimes you have to, may I say this and I'm going to turn it over to sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you have a dream, but you have to mature into the dream. Mm. Because if it becomes a reality and you're not mature enough, it won't work. And so with this uh, talk show, mine and Kim knows, on one of our podcast episodes, I cried. Because I said, I want to do a talk show so bad mm. and everybody keeps saying no to me mm. and I know I got it mm -hmm. and I heard a pastor say that that, that that very Sunday sometimes you have to mature into the dream 
but it doesn't mean that it's not that it's a no it just is a not right now right, right, and for me right. it has been 18 years right. of people saying no to me every that i've had so many no's but i know had i gotten that talk show 18 years ago you wasn't ready. whatever i wasn't ready whatever you told me to do if it was gonna make people laugh i'd have done it stand on my head da, 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 i would have done it and it would not have lasted because i didn't know who i was um, now where i am now uh, i truly lead when people come to me with dumb stuff i don't and it's like i go that's not who i'm representing yeah that's not my audience mm -hmm. my audience, i know exactly who's watching me single women entrepreneurs uh women with children uh single moms and i know they're not don't want to watch a 21 year old throw beer on their breasts mm -hmm. That's, and I can look at them and say no mm -hmm. and be fine about it. I can look at a person and go, I know this is not, this is not working with us. And before, I just wanted everybody to like me. I just wanted you to love me. Wow. Now I'm just like, no. It's, it, I tell Kim this all the time. You put, you put friendship energy on business. And sometimes you have to take, it's the different yeah, energy. I'm going to stop this year. Yeah. Yeah. No, that Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not opposite of her. Yes, very nice. <laughs> no, but I, uh, to the creatives out there, uh, one thing, like you said, fear, but you got to eat. Mm. You got to eat. Mm. So I always say, you're building a factory while on the job. Because mm. right, 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 right. I learned that a long time ago. So right. you're building your dream, but you're working on the job. Right. But you got to keep working on what you really want to do. Mm. And absolutely, uh, everything that she said, but you have to know what it is you want to do, and you got to have a plan. You can't just be out there willy-nilly. Like Damn. Sherry was going on talk shows, and she was working towards it, and then she forced me into a podcast so she could practice <laughs> even more. So you have to understand that whatever you like to do creatively and you want it to go somewhere, first of all, you got to do the work. And that means the research. What are other people doing? Right. How do I get into this? If you're a painter, if you're a singer, what are people doing? Because tr uh, trends change. Right. People change. And, and that's why she was saying I was on commercials. One thing I understood, they called me the commercial queen. Yes. What I did was watch commercials. Mm. And every time their hair changed, so did mine. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're doing uh, curly hair, black girls. I put my hair all curly. I go in there and I just, <laughs> <laughs> and she booked everything. That was uh, that I really because I one of my big commercials was Pringles Double Stack, and I remember I went in there and I was like, I got this, I got to sell some chips, and uh, and I, I put some bright colors on my head. I think about what I would like to see on TV, what I've seen, and what was the trend. And I was in there. Then want to taste? You can't turn back. Try new Pringles Double Stack. <laughs> Or that's what I'm saying. So you have to see what other people are doing and what the trends are. If you're an artist, what's going on and where to go. And don't be afraid of social media. Right. Go on the TikTok. Right. Everybody, you right. got to see what everyone's doing and how to get there. Right. And get all of it. All of it to see where it's going. Etsy, if, if you're you know, into the arts and stuff like that. Yeah. You got to see what people are doing because people now... That this, what we call the super highway thing mm -hmm. in the 80s, that has, it has opened up the world right. to opportunity. Right. People can find you no matter what you do. And there are people looking for your talent. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. There are people. And also, I would say, it's that one thing that I always keep in my head. Show me the five people you hang around with, and I'll tell you who you are. Right. Right. So who is in your circle? Or do you really? Have, yeah. yeah. So that's, I'm you. <laughs> No, but I, in my truth. circle are women true. who are on a higher level than me, who inspire me. I don't have women in my life who are just sitting there going, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, negative. You, got the, you know the negative Nelly? Oh, yeah. After you get off the phone, oh, yeah. you're like, damn, I'm, I'm going to do it. It took all of your energy mm -hmm. to pour into. I, I am around people who inspire me to go higher. Yes. Not competitively. But just to go, who encourage me to go higher, mm -hmm. so that when I say to them, I got this idea, or Kim, I remember she had this idea uh, where she had this stick that you can go behind a car seat to pull the the, the seat belt to um, do you know do it's around. It's called the quick stick. Yeah. 
the queen it was, said. Uh, it's for the baby car seat, so you mm -hmm. stick your hand back there. Stick your hand back there. And it's, it was such a great invention, but you want to be able to tell people your idea, and they go, girl, everybody do that. Yeah. You don't want to do that. That sound crazy as hell. Where are you going to get the money? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want people to go, oh, my gosh, that is, wow. Why didn't I think of that? You're going to do well with that. Yeah. And and you want those kind of people around you because you and you know you got to tr trust the people who are going to help you who are going to undergird you so you don't tell everybody but you want to make sure that your close circle are people that are going to take you higher and that you're going to do the same for them mm -hmm. yes. and stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Ooh. What that mean in the practical? Uh, that what that means that lady on your talk show partake cookies. She was ready. She saw the investor. She went to him. She didn't have to go back home right. and say that. She was ready. She was like, look, I got this idea for this cookie. Blah, 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 blah. I need some investors. Oh, let's hear more about it. Not, oh, I got this thing. Can I get your card? They were ready. Right. Don't let fear stop you. They were ready. And That's I one of my peeves when I say, well, Miss Sherry, can I do your makeup? Or can I, you know, do it? And I go, well, do you have a card or something? And they go, take my number. Uh, and nobody gonna call I'm you. I'm not calling you. I'm not, I'm not taking you. Know, I want to take a second for another creative in the room who is also doing that. She's been in the game of comedy oh, for years. Oh my god! And I've seen her a long time. I was like, this girl is funny. One of the best. One of the best. Men but, can't even follow this woman. Yeah, this woman is, is really mm. funny. Why is she going before us on the show tomorrow? We, I don't even know we're gonna be able to follow. Oh no, her. I, I got some juggling bears coming out in oh, between. Oh my god! So, this woman here. Uh, but she is uh, one of our friends but she uh, too has to break through so the world can see oh my gosh is. be flat be flat yeah. she's gonna be on the show with us tomorrow and, her show with us. and B has her podcast called Tighten Up Tuesdays because of these two ladies yes. oh, <laughs> this is one of the most Tuesday. underrated comics yes. ever who is one of the funniest, I met her, I don't know when you met her, I met her in Cleveland, Ohio. And when I say, cause I was filling in for this one cause she had booked uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, and she said, funny. Sherry, can you fill in for me? But it was in the most hood part yeah. of Cleveland. It was ghetto yeah. to the, and I said, Kim really don't like me. And, and so. I had to get that check. I bombed, you got your check. But I remember B flat clothes and you went up and every, you can hear this times 500 people mm. she went up and killed it it's so hard to follow this woman you have to this one right here the world got to see the world it. Has you laugh. and when the world sees you oh. i thank you all because y'all introduced me to a world on a whole nother level and i appreciate it because my podcast is under these ladies so what is your podcast but i want you to what is your my podcast, podcast it's diy Tightening up. My podcast is called Tighten Up Tuesdays. Tighten up and I Tuesday. teach you how to use the things that you already have. Like, I fly around the U.S. flipping people's spaces with like 200 bucks or less. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and then we list all the things that we flip. The last flip I did in Orlando in an apartment, we flipped 31 things. Wow. So that's what we do. We go through the budget. And the great thing about these two women starting my podcast, now that they kicked me off, my <laughs> podcast, no, not that they kicked me off, they don't pay for my shit no more. My, <laughs> because they don't need to, because my podcast followers, they pay for the podcast. They pay for the project. They pay for my computer. Sherry started all that. Like, she needs a new computer. Her husband gave her an old ass computer. The podcast people raised the money, they bought it, and now to this day, they still pay for everything. Wow. They pay for me to fly around, to do the flips. I do. The, they told me, stop doing the cash app reports. They said, I'm too transparent. They was like, we don't want to hear about no money no damn more. And I was like, good, because now that I'm going to spend it, and I don't care where it goes. <laughs> and she's so, a but, proud Delta. This one right yes, here. I am. Oh. I play right here in St. Louis, Alpha Omega Chapter, okay. Fall 89. Oh, and I'm branded. This girl got a brand. Yeah, right. I do, baby. It ain't many people. She's the goat. It ain't many people with a brand. I'm the goat. Oh, thank yes, you so I have much. So be right. flat. That's one of my so other much. girlfriends. Yes, fantastic. So you can see we want to turn over to the audience for a few questions. Just a few questions. Stay up here. Stay, stay, stay. Oh, I'm going to give my other oh, okay. floor roar. Who has a question? <laughs> In the house, we can see. Yes. Oh, yes, please. Stand up and, and speak loud is what we're hearing. And breathe. We have a, a Joshua as well. He's, uh, oh. he's in Hollywood. I will introduce you to him, too. He doesn't like the UA at the end of his name. But, uh, <laughs> but you know how it goes. But um, 
Uh, we had to give a shout out to Jennifer Lewis, another St. Louis, you know. But anyway, Jennifer. I got two names for you guys, and I won't frame the question. I'll let you go with it. I'll let you. Re uh, Ricky Smiley, Gerald Levert. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> oh, Ricky Smiley. I was just with him, of course, last week. Hmm. Uh, he lost his son. He's a great friend. Uh, and Gerald Levert, of course. Tell him. Uh, tell him. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> tell him about Gerald Levert. We don't have enough time. <laughs> but growing up, actually, to just talk to Eddie. He Levert wanted to marry yesterday. her. Uh, so we are childhood friends. And mm. uh, we always said when we turned 50 that we were going to get married. Well, Gerald uh, obviously uh, left this earth. Mm. Um, but we were great friends. Uh, he's the one that took me out to Los Angeles. Uh, that started my career. I uh, went out there uh, with Levert. They were doing Soul Train. Uh -huh. And I was like, Can I, go? I want to see Hollywood. And uh, I went out there. So, uh, absolutely, uh, God rest his soul, but I'm very close to his family. So. All right, all right. Thank, Thank you. you. I see a hand in the back. Yes. And then I recognize you. Yes. Hi. I'm Lady J. Houston. I'm just honored to be in your presence. I'm a singer, trumpeter, and band leader. And my she plays B flat, plays the trumpet in her show. B flat, B flat trumpet. Yeah, okay. I'm the trumpeter. <laughs> uh, it's regarding men. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. As a female band leader, I run into a lot of attitude, and then I hear people will say things because. I want things a certain way. It's like I don't have a right to want things my way. And so, you know, you get, you know, the stigmas and things come in to play. And then on the flip side, and then that cast and couch stuff is still seem to be out there. So how do you all deal with those kinds of things? Wow, that was a lot. That <laughs> <laughs> was Well, you also, because you book a lot of comics, you I have do, to be the I boss do. lady. I am and the you, boss lady. Yes. Yes. In a predominantly male. Male dominant. Yes. yes. So how, how do you but the it? thing is, handle? I'm the boss lady, but I'm not bossy. So here's the thing. I do let people have autonomy, but at the same time, I don't deal with the casting couch. Now, I don't know what Sherry and Kim did. But I, that's why I ain't nowhere. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Believe me, I have been offered. I'm just, these are my girls. I'm just talking yes, shit. Yes. But we, I've been in those positions where I don't. Believe me, my manager has said to me a thousand times, because I'm one of those people in meetings that be like, I don't like that. No. And she takes me in the bathroom to say, in Hollywood, you're supposed to say, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I'll entertain that thought. Oh, I didn't look at it like, I'm not the one. <laughs> so I don't do the casting couch. I've been offered that, and I'd rather not have the role, the part, or whatever. I'd rather just sell now, ladies, on the, bar, on the boardwalk <laughs> than to be in that position. Mm. So I look at my journey, and if people want to enjoy their journey in life, then you mm. just do you. Mm. So that's why I've always just done me. Yeah. And I can write about the journey. Mm. And I wouldn't have had it if it wasn't for these women. All right. so All right. Keep right. me straight. <laughs> yes. You see, I don't know if the word is ballsy, but you seem yeah. like me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I never understood that because I grew up with all men, my, yeah. all my brothers. And I thought, you know, that's how women should be. And I believe now we're at a time where women are we run the world. Right. Mm. And yeah, and the men that are doing that, they're insecure. Right. Yes. Not yes. all of them. No, 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 no. The, the ones that are, oh, that that are doing not that. even the casting out, but the ones that, you know, don't want her to do this, you can't do that, and they're not listening to her. If she's the boss, she's the boss. Right. Mm. They have to follow you as if you were a man, a woman, uh, just a boss. It doesn't yeah. matter. Mm. And I feel like you do not. Because uh, I would have done that back in the day. I remember I was like, oh, I got I to gotta hide my, you know, my little masculine side of my boss side. Mm -hmm. I can't run it. Let me be, a f you know, <laughs> feminine. Let me go. Mm -hmm. And I remember because when Shelly Garrett's uh, beauty shop, I, I took out his next play. And I, these were my peers. And I was the boss. And the men did, they didn't want it. Mm. They couldn't take it. Mm. But I had to be strong. But I remember <clears throat> cowering like this. Oh, please, do you think you can come to rehearsal today? It would really help. But see, that's called playing the game. Because yeah. I got to get my show done. Mm. I don't know how to play the game. You know, mm. I would play the Thank game you. because I didn't have an understudy for that part. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's just called playing the game. But then after a while, I was like, 
oh, this is your third infraction. <laughs> Guess what? We brought Billy in from Chicago. <laughs> Today will be your last day. <laughs> so keep being you, keep going forward. I have never paid attention to the casting couch. I just play that game too, you know, and I think and because of Me Too and everything, I think that's going away. I hope that it's going away more because we speak up now. Mm -hmm. But even if it, I ignore it. I ignore it because I know what I'm doing. And if somebody says something to me, I, ain't, I don't even have the energy to say, oh, you can't say that to me. I'm like, well, you going to give me the job or not? <laughs> we already, ain't nobody doing all that. What's going on? I go straight. We keep it business. Amen. Just keep it I business. I would say uh, with the casting couch, if you know that you know that God gave you this gift, that it is ordained by God, mm -hmm. then you can confidently say no to mm -hmm. the casting couch because mm -hmm. nobody mm -hmm. will stop the blessings that God mm -hmm. has for you. You don't have to, because see, and I run into a lot of, uh, of women in Hollywood who, who you know, succumb. And it's just like when you succumb, it's because it's in fear that if I don't do it, I'm not going to get it. But then that takes out the power that has been given to you, the gift that has been given. There's a scripture, and we're so spiritual, even though we cuss a lot. Like It says your gift will make way, will make room for you. So that casting couch thing, you can literally confidently say no. Because you're not relying on that person, mm -hmm. who more than likely, if you go and do it, the not, they're not going. They're not going to follow through. Mm -hmm. They're just saying but it's that. It's even more. It's even more because we can go. I'm not going to say the big star's name, mm -hmm. but we've been there. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing. I remember I was supposed to be his wife in this movie, and I remember I was doing another TV show, and he came to my trailer and all this, and I and I said to him, I said, you know, I said it's interesting. You know, we're just going to be friends, and and. He knew what I knew. I said, because I want to work with you mm. continuously through my career. Mm. Because had I done that, mm. do you think he would have hired me mm. later? Never. Never. No, that's how you see these women, and we do their careers and men. They, You're like, what they, happened they, to they, them? They bloom exactly. and then they fall. Mm. They, because they did that. They got that job. Ooh, that was a big job. But now, you know, people whispering, yeah, and you can't get that job. That's the one so thing. I never did that because I knew I wanted to work with these people. Yeah, and as comics, we have gone through that a lot. I don't think the Me Too has gotten to the comedy the world, comedy. Yes. unfortunately. <laughs> and we've gone through that, you know, uh, many, many times. If you want to yeah. get on this show, if you want to go on the road, if you want to do this. And I, I just, you know, for me, I was just like, I know I'm funny. And I don't want to go that path because once you go that path, it's hard to stop. And I think that kind yep. of thing chips away at your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking and at yourself, and we know other mirror, female comics that have that done that. that. Mm -hmm. And where are they? Well. They're, They're not never. on Too Funny Mamas. No. <laughs> no. Or tied up to the Or tied up to the Show. And being the boss, being the boss at some point. It's a hard thing being a woman because, you know, like Kim said, I, I lead too, and I have a lot of men under me, the camera crew, the, the, and coming into a show that was already with the same um, uh, 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 crew and the same host, it was really hard because I'm about my business and I don't play around. Yeah, You're not gonna, I'm not, I, I've had to tell people, I'm not inebriated, I'm not gonna have a man running me, I am about having a successful talk show and I'm not playing around. And it's, you know, and I, I tried the, Oh, that's so great the way you do the right, camera. Right. Oh, that's so. And you know, then they want to play with you. They yeah. want to keep testing you. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You, th that's where you do have to use that energy in in that space that you're working, where you're like, I, I am the boss, and I'm gonna if we're gonna get this right because we got. I do tell people we got the same shared goal. Mm -hmm. Let's get there. Let's do this. And I and I have to be a little. Now my problem here's the problem. When you're so into that energy right there, and Kim has to get on me all the time. I take it. To my dates, and I'm going. Okay, we, I'm gonna order this, and I'm gonna order that, and, right. and, and I go. Where they go? Where they? <laughs> my daddy said, leave it at the door. <laughs> you come on, leave work. it at the door. Ooh, but you know, it is, and you have to just trust God. He's guiding you. I'm always saying, give me guidance. Show me how to talk to people. Show me these people the way you see them, because some I can be a little bit more nurturing. There, you know, there's a gentleman on our thing. He lifts up my door after when I'm supposed to come out. He lost his wife for 37 years. So with mm. him, when you don't do stuff right, I can't be, John, why didn't you do, you know, I have to be very tender. Mm. Gotta hug him first, cause he's just hurting. And that's what God has showed me. So that's why I always ask, show me the people that are under me and how I'm supposed to deal with them and, and show yourself, show it to, you know, so let me be a conduit of mm. you. 
And so I'm always, you know, sometimes you fail, you know, but you do have to walk into the, he puts you in as a band leader. Oh, That's yeah. who you yeah. are. Yeah. That's what you do. And I'm also loving hearing uh, this value of integrity, right? This, oh, very this much private so. honor that all three of you are holding true to. Right. We've got time for one more question, but B-flat, let us hear from you. I'm glad that you mentioned that because in this world, a lot of people think that female comedians don't get along. And that's, it's amazing that we get to work together and that's only because we book each other. Mm. Yeah. Most men in this business will not put two women on they one show. Mm. They will not do it. Because it's like, oh, y'all gonna talk about this. They don't give us the opportunity. Wow. But the thing is, they realize that there are more funny women than there are out there, and there are these men that are out there. So they block us. So it's like if we get an opportunity to work together, it's because we put that together. Mm. Otherwise, but wow. men don't do that in this business yeah. because they feel like, oh, they're going to get it because, oh, they're cute, and they're going to knock us out the box. So that's something that we have to deal with all the time. Mm. So I just say We got my, a female mayor over here in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> you should answer all the questions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on now. So and yeah. find, you know, before we move on, find mm. like-minded women, because I know you're yes. not the only female we get band along. leader. There's got to be some more female mm -hmm. band leaders who are going through the same. And when you, you know, it's like it's more power together mm -hmm. than it is United to get yes. a journey along. Right. We got another question. We're we, sorry. We're I, so sorry. That right? was it? We, we, I'm getting the signal. We can signal. do it fast. It's oh, over. I'm getting the signal. No, they okay. like, have to go. It's over. They say get up out of here. I feel bad. Last question. Yes. You all have truly inspired me tonight. I enjoyed hearing your story. Thank motherhood. You. you all have had a long career. I remember sharing when you were on Jamie Foxx show. The Jamie. <laughs> so what are you most proud of in your career? Or even oh. just in life? What are you most proud of? Mm. Okay. That I kept Joshua alive to 12. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I, you know what? That's a really good question. And I would say I'm most proud of being a mother. Mm. And I'm most proud of because... The, you know, it's like that's my first assignment is being a mother. Everything yep. else pales in comparison. And I feel like when at the end of the day when he looks at me and says, did you do what I asked you to do? All the other stuff is just icing on the cake. I'm proud. I mean, I wouldn't even say I'm proud to do a talk show. I feel incredibly blessed that he's blessed me to bless other people. Because your blessings are never only about you. Right. It, it affects yeah. other people. Everybody's supposed to eat off your blessing. But it really is being a mother, and especially of a, a child who has special needs, and that I've been able, that God has been, it, it blessed me to be able to take care of him and, and nurture him and hopefully, you know, let him leave the womb. I guess that's the one thing I'm most proud, but more thankful that I've been able to do that. So mm -hmm. not, not this career. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Questions. Ladies, we thank you for this time. Hopefully we'll see y'all at the at show tomorrow, although right. you will see half the day go to the show. Thank well, you, you so much. This was awesome. You all might have enjoyed it, but it was good for us yeah. to be able to talk to regular people. Thank and you. So thank you so much.